What's up everybody, Nick Hertwire, back for the 10th and here with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we saw the 1994 MLB strike start. We don't have any strikes like that today, thankfully, but we do have a US Open to talk about, as well as some more PGA Championships and some more Olympic Games to get into. So if y'all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This Day in Sports History. We'll start off today in 1920 with that U.S. Open, and Ted Ray with a score of 11 under would part of the 18th hole, giving him a one-stroke victory over runners-up Harry Varden, Jock Hutchinson, Leo Degel, and Jack Burke Sr. to win his second and final major. Moved to Major League Baseball six years later, and Lou Gehrig for the New York Yankees would hit two home runs off of Walter Johnson in the Yankees' 7-5 victory over the Senators. The Iron Horse's accomplishment would mark only the second time in Walter Johnson's career that he would give up two home runs to the same player in the same game. The other would come 12 years earlier when Jack Fournier accomplished this in 1914. Back to golf now at the PGA Championship in 1933, Gene Sarzen would defeat Willie Doggin 5-4 to win his third PGA Championship and his sixth of seven overall majors. Now we go to the Olympics. We start off in 1936. Nita Senf and Ree Mastenbroek would make it a Netherlands 1-2 in the women's 100 meter backstroke final and Senf would win with a time of 1 minute 18.9 seconds. Then in diving at the 10 meter platform in those Olympics, Americans Dorothy Poynton Hill and Velma Dunn would take the gold and silver medal. Move up 12 years to the Olympics of 1948 and the United States would successfully defend their Olympic basketball title in a 65-21 victory over France to win their second of 15 titles. Then in boxing, Hungarian Laszlo Pop would win the first of three consecutive Olympic gold medals, defeating Johnny Wright via points. Move to cycling now in those games, and Jose Bayer of France would win the individual road race. Belgium would take gold in the team section, defeating Great Britain and France. Then in football, Johan Gren would score twice as Sweden would defeat Yugoslavia 3-1 to to win their only Olympic gold medal in football. Finally in those games, three Finnish gymnasts would have a dead heat for the gold medal in the pommel horse section. So Pavel Altonen, Veko Hutanen, and Heikai Savolainen would all be awarded the gold medal. We get off those games now and go to an odd promotion in 1951 in Major League Baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Any fan who would show up with a musical instrument during the musical depreciation night would be admitted free to the game. In the game, you would see an assortment of trumpets, trombones, tubas, accordions, flutes, violins, and many other types of instruments. With about 10% of the total crowd, or 2,426 total people taking advantage of this promotion. We stay in Major League Baseball, move up to 1963, and Basketball Hall of Famer Dave DeBusher would throw a shutout against the Cleveland Indians. Nine innings pitched, six hits allowed, one walk, three strikeouts. This would be the best game of his baseball career, but this would also be his third and final victory in baseball before he moved to a full-time basketball player. We remain in baseball in 1969, and the Baltimore Orioles' Jim Palmer would no-hit the Oakland Athletics in an 8 to nothing victory. On the day, Palmer, nine innings pitched, six walks allowed, eight strikeouts. The team also had two errors but they won the game. That's what matters. Move up 10 years and stay in the major leagues. Against the team that traded him in the Cubs, Lou Brock would get his 3,000th hit when he would hit a single in the Cardinals' 3-2 victory over the Cubs. Two years later, we have a world record in swimming. Mary Meager would break her own women's 200-meter butterfly record with a time of 2 minutes, 5.96 seconds, and this would stand for just under 19 years until 2000. Back to golf in 1989 at the PGA Championship, Payne Stewart, with a score of 12 under, would win the first of three major titles, one stroke ahead of runners-up Andy Bean, Mike Reed, and Curtis Strange. Two years later, we have another world record in swimming, this time on the men's side in 1991. Michael Barrowman would get the 200-meter breaststroke record with 2 minutes, 10.6 seconds. He would end up breaking this the next year. Back to the PGA Championship in 1995, Steve Elkington, with a score of 17 under, would win his first major title after a playoff birdie on the first hole against Colin Montgomery to win his only major. 
Five years later, we stick with golf, this time on the women's side, at the Canadian Open, actually the last year they would count the Canadian Open as a major. Meg Mellon would win one stroke ahead of runner-up Rosie Jones. Four years later, in 2004, the 28th Olympic Games would officially open up in Athens, Greece. We have some baseball to get into now in 2006. We start with Cleveland Indians first baseman Travis Hafner tying Don Mattingly's MLB mark for six grand slams in a season, which is the most, when he would homer off of Kansas City's Luke Hudson in the first inning in a 13-0 victory. This is still tied for the most of all time. Then in the Dodgers-Giants game, Greg Maddox was going up against Jason Schmidt, and we just saw a pitching classic here. Maddox, 8-inch pitch, 2 hits, 4 strikeouts, and then Schmidt, 8-inch pitch, 5 hits, 1 walk, 9 strikeouts. Russell Martin would end up hitting a 10th inning walk-off home run to give the Dodgers the victory. But in the first inning, when Giants' Barry Bonds stepped up to the plate and lined into a double play, it would mark the first and only time in baseball history a current 300-game winner would go up against a current batter who had more than 700 home runs. Finally, in 2006, at the Canadian Open on the women's side, no longer a major, Christy Kerr, with a score of 12 under, would win one stroke ahead of runner-up Angela Stanford. Now we get into the 2008 Olympic Games, and we'll start off with American Michael Phelps. He would end up winning two gold medals all in the day. He would end up winning two gold medals on the day, both in world record time. The 200 meter butterfly with a time of 1 minute 52.03 seconds would be broken by him next year. And in the 4x200 meter freestyle relay, the US would win with a time of 6 minutes 58.56 seconds. And their team would go on to break the record the next year at the World Championships by just 0.01 seconds. But these medals for Phelps would give him his 4th and 5th gold medal of those games. Stay in swimming this time on the women's side. Australian Stephanie Rice would wrap up the medley double when she would swim a world record 2 minutes 8.45 seconds to win the 200 meter individual medley. This record would end up being broken next year. Finally in swimming, Italian Federica Pellegrini would set a world record 1 minute 54.82 seconds in the 200 meter freestyle and Sarah Isakovic and she would become Slovenia's first Olympic swimmer to ever win a medal. Now we move up to 2012. We talked about that the London Olympics officially closed the other day, but we have a stripping of a medal today, and Nadzea Ostopchuk of Belarus would be stripped of her shot put gold medal after failing a drug test, so the gold would now be awarded to New Zealand's Valerie Adams. Move up to 2016 at the Olympics. Go back to Michael Phelps. Phelps would end his career at the Rio de Janeiro Olympics as part of the winning U.S. 4x100 medley relay team with a time of 3 minutes, 27.95 seconds. Winning this would just add to Phelps' medals, giving him 23 gold medals and 28 overall medals at the Olympics. The U.S. women's team would also win the 4x100 medley relay, with a time of 3 minutes, 53.13 seconds. Then in the men's 1500 meter freestyle, Italy's Gregorio Paltrinieri would win with a time of 14 minutes, 34.57 seconds. Move over to the track side now. British superstar Mo Farah would win the first leg of the 5,000-10,000 meter double, a repeat of 2012, in 27 minutes, 5.17 seconds in the 10K. Then in the women's 100 meter gold, Jamaican Elaine Thompson would win with a time of 10.71 seconds. Move up one year to 2017 at the PGA Championship, Justin Thomas with a score of 8 under would win his first and only major, two shorts ahead of runners-up, Francesco Molinari, Patrick Reed, and Louis Oosthuizen. This would also be his only major. We end today's video off at Major League Baseball in 2018, and Ronald Acuna Jr. would be coming with a fourth player in history to lead off both games of a doubleheader with a home run. Pablo Lopez in Game 1 and off of Mirandi Gonzalez in Game 2. Acuna would join names such as Harry Hooper in 1913, Ricky Henderson in 1993, and... Brady Anderson in 1999 as the only players to accomplish this. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize. If I mispronounce any names, I also apologize. But I'll see everybody tomorrow for Nick Dwyer and the 10th inning. See ya.